Thou shalt not bring any criticism or any or voice any disapproval about your fellow believer, especially if they be in sin. I am the Lord. Hey everybody, welcome to Contramundum Pro Mundo. My name is Richard and uh, we've got a show here. This is a show on YouTube. You clicked on it because you're on YouTube. And we're going to be talking about the 11th commandment coming up next. It's, it's fun. It really is. Interact and talk with people and kind of just talk about things that aren't necessarily always talked about or just give uh, a perspective that I pray is biblical. Uh, I am a follower of Christ. I am married and I do have children. I'm a pastor of a church here in Kentucky, a Southern Baptist church. Um, don't worry, we're not woke. That's our little tagline. I added that on the sign out on the road. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But no, I did go to seminary, graduated a couple years ago, and seeking to use this platform not to be mean, not to uh, be critical of every little thing, but rather to seek to be as biblical and faithful as possible. A lot of times we lose the word faithful. You know, we want to be gospel centered and gospel focused and missional and this and this and this, but we lose the faithfulness. Um, Jesus said, "If you love me, you'll keep my commandments." And there's many things that we just don't like to do as believers, especially as Baptists, uh, or just, you know, most Bible-believing churches are basically Baptist churches without the name. There's a lot of Baptist churches. Your church might be a Baptist church. You might not even know it uh, because it's, you know, Redemption Church or just like the place. I don't know. Uh, (laughs) They don't even use church, which is like you're like tricking people into the kingdom maybe. I'm not sure. Anyway, um... We're going to be talking about the 11th commandment today. The 11th commandment. Now, you might be thinking, well, the 11th commandment. Well, here, let me read it because most people don't know about it. Most people don't know about it. Um, Let me read it and you can see if you know where this is in the text of Scripture. Thou shalt not bring any criticism or or voice any disapproval about your fellow believer, especially... If they be in sin, I am the Lord. If you can get context, I'll read it. We'll just back up a few verses. Honor your father, thy thy father and thy mother, 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 my mother, that thy days may be may be long upon the land which the Lord God giveth thee. I shouldn't have done the KJV, but it's too late now. Thou shalt not kill murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Thou shalt not bring any criticism or voice any disapproval of thou thou fellow believer, your fellow believer, especially if they be in sin. I am the Lord. I hope, I hope you're thinking, what is this guy reading? Is he reading the Book of Mormon or something? What is this? What is this? What are you doing? No, I'm not reading the Book of Mormon. I'm not reading the Book of Mormon. Don't worry. Um, I am reading my own words, at least the last part. There is no 11th commandment. <laughs> uh, spoiler, spoiler alert. There is no 11th commandment. However, however, um. <laughs> Bodhi Bauckham and many others have mentioned it in preaching and writing and other things. And it's basically uh, this thing that's imaginary. It's imaginary. But it's a joke where people won't want to bring criti- criticism, bring judgment, bring critique, uh, be mean, quote unquote, against a fellow Southern the Baptist or just a fellow believer in general. And this is our modern, very thin skinned, very anemic culture. 100 years ago, didn't exist, right? And, and beyond that, even probably 50, 60 years ago. But over the last couple decades, with the rise of uh, social media, with the rise of everybody knowing everything, with the rise of all this uh, tech that we can just instantly know stuff, 
I believe. That's my theory anyway. We have everybody trying to like kind of be the lowest common denominator. I'm working with fractions with one of my children right now and uh, denominators and numerators. Fun stuff. But you want to always reduce it down, right? And this is where the culture is. This is why cities are generally liberal because they don't want to be offensive. They don't want to be whatever. They want to just kind of go with the flow. Well, being a leftist isn't really going with the flow much either. And it's a terrible idea most of the time. But most people think it's what everybody else believes. So I'm going to believe that too. Because, you know, we see it in the news. We see it in Hollywood. I mean, all these outlets are radically leftist, right? But that's another show. The 11th commandment, the 11th commandment, thou shalt not bring any criticism or voice any disapproval about your fellow believer, especially if they be in sin. I am the Lord. Now, again, that is not, that is, I, I just wrote that. So you can coin that if you want that and sneak it into uh, something if you want to or not. I don't care. You might be thinking, yeah, well, but we shouldn't be mean to people, right? Jesus wasn't mean to people. Paul wasn't really mean to people. Why, why, why are you, why are you being mean to people? Because sometimes I do call people out. I have some videos from over the summer where I call out Ed Litton and his plagiarism and his lying and his theft. And to this day, in the middle of December 2021, six months later uh, almost, he hasn't responded. He hasn't recanted. He hasn't repented. Um, I had actually emailed his church. I know a number of other people did. I had a conversation with somebody I'm going to post later this week. So look for that. Contra Talk. That's my... Um, talk show where I talk to individuals and we have a little bit longer form discussion. And that one, he's a pastor in a uh, very seasoned, very well-known pastor in the SBC. So look for that. I'm going to try and post those on Saturdays uh, coming up and moving forward. So anyway, but Jesus never did this, right? Well, Luke 13, 31, on the very same day, this, some of the Pharisees came saying to him, Get out and depart from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I shall be perfected. The fox there. That's the hook. Jesus is calling him a fox. And no, he's not having some, you know, attraction or something like that that our progressive friends might say. And Jesus was just questioning his own sexuality. No, no. He's calling him a fox because being a dog and being a fox and other such things wasn't good. Dogs, lest we forget, were trash collectors. Remember Lazarus, the sick man? He has the dogs coming and licking his sores, right? That's gross. They're not little chihuahuas and little labradoodles and little uh, uh, magnadoodles. Magnadoodle is the, uh, it's like the 90s game. Never mind. Uh... And I, I grew up with Welsh corgis. They weren't huge dogs. They weren't tiny dogs. <clears throat> but they're mutants. We mute. We we you we mutate these dogs, <laughs> like through genetic breeding and everything else. And yeah, it's just for profit. We just do that. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this necessarily. But the dogs of today were not the dogs of 2,000 years ago. They were trash collectors. They were they were just roaming around in packs, and it was just gross and everything else. So calling somebody a dog, calling somebody a fox, wasn't a good thing, right? It's not like it is today. So, Jesus is calling Herod a fox. You think, well, yeah, okay, but what about what about these others? I don't know. Well, Paul, through the Spirit, 1 Timothy 1, just as Jesus was in the Spirit, this I charge, this charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made to you excuse me, about you, that by them you may wage a good war warfare. Oh, a good warfare. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not, I'm a Christian. I seek peace, man. I'm not, I'm, we're not at war. We're, this isn't a battle. Au contraire, my friend. Au contraire, as they say. What language is that? French? I don't know. Holding faith and a good conscience. By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith. Notice, are you making shipwreck of your faith? I don't know. Maybe you're thinking about it. Maybe you're deconstructing. Maybe you're thinking about deconstructing because it's so cool and fun and exciting and hip, whatever. They have made shipwreck of their faith because they have not made a good 
warfare. Verse 20, among them, Paul, here we go, are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan, so they will not, so they will learn not to blaspheme. Oh, Paul, why you got to be calling people out, man? Haven't you read Exodus 20? Jude, beloved, writing to people, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation. This is very interesting. I love Jude. He was very eager to write about their common salvation. I wonder if he ever did. Maybe. But the Spirit said, keep this, not that. Fascinating, isn't it? I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Contend again. There's that war language. Seriously? Now Jude's after it too? I can't just ignore Paul. You know, you wonder to some people, oh, I have a skepticism of Paul, a hermeneutic of suspicion. I, I, I love Jesus, but I tolerate Paul. Blah, 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 blah. It's just red letter Christianity nonsense. It's all red letters. Okay? So let's just, if you want to be faithful, again, you want to be faithful. That's part of, part of being faithful is consistency. Okay? Not picking and choosing and ponying up to the buffet of the Bible and being like, well, I like this, but I don't like that. This is really nice. And this culture t currently tolerates these things. So I'm going to talk about that, but I'm <laughs> definitely not going to talk about that thing. No way. We're going to avoid that altogether. Oh, Paul mentioned it. Well, then we'll just, we'll just go ahead and ignore Paul because, you know, it's not like he knew the law better than anybody else of his day. It's not like he was a Jewish Roman citizen. It's not like he was confronted by Christ on the road to Damascus and knocked flat on his butt and blind for three days. It's not like he was beaten and shipwrecked and thrown in prison and all these other things and he counts it all joy. No, 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 no. That's just, you know, Paul, Paul's just, Paul's just a bigot. Okie dokie. Verse 4 of Jude. <clears throat> for certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Now, Jude does not use any names here. However, he does still say there are certain people who have crept in unnoticed. Now, if you want to call out somebody, as it were, or an organization or something like that without using names, you can. And I'm not saying you have to. I'm not saying you don't have to. Like, the point is that when there's sin, we're called to sharpen each other. As iron sharpens iron, so when one man sharpens another, one person sharpens another, right? And further still, this is all about math, like Matthew 18, right? Go to your brother especially if in the local church. Now, it's hard when it's already public. You know, like Ed Litton's plagiarism and theft, that's already public. We're not in a church. Now, he's my president, quote-unquote, of the SBC. And I've emailed him, and I've talked to him. Uh, not him, but his, his office. And many people on Twitter and many other people as well. And, you know, he makes up this, and then he changes this, then he appears on this show, then he goes down to Southwestern and says, oh, I just have a really good memory. And it's like, you're just lying, man. Like, come on. We're not idiots. Stop it. The world's certainly not idiots. Now, we can talk about the world in another video, but that's just one example. Once it's public, it's the same thing with your sin. Like if you sin against your wife, for example, right? And it's just you and her and, and you go to her and you ask for forgiveness, right? That's what you do. You don't need to tell it to, your, to the church because the sin was not against your church. Now, if the sin was against your church, right? Maybe you get caught in the baptismal, right? Or, or, or something, doing something, or it's online, or, you know, something leaks or whatever. And then it's, it's public. Well, that's a different story. But Jude is calling out these people who have denied their only, denied our master and Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians, for I testify for him that he has a deep concern for you and those who are at Laodicea and Hierapolis. This is Colossians 4, 13. Luke, the beloved physician, sends you his greetings. And also does Demas. Greet the brothers and sisters of Laodicea and Nympha, the church in her house, and so on. So he mentions Demas there. That's toward the end of Colossians, naming off as Paul often does. 2 Timothy 4, that's Paul's last letter. Not Titus, but Timothy. Not Hebrews but Timothy. <clears throat> Make every effort to come to me quickly. 
Paul writing to Timothy, his second letter, right? Because Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Now, Crescens and Di Titus are two different guys as well, besides Demas. But he doesn't say they're in love with this present world, do, does he? No. Deserted me. And he's deserted me. He's not just left. He's deserted me. He's left in love with this present world. We don't know if Demas ever repented. And this is the case for so many. So many have come to the knowledge of the truth, or at least outwardly, and then deny the Lord. Disfellowship, deconstruct, whatever, whatever term you want to use. It was something different 20 years ago and 50 years ago and 2,000 years ago and so on. The point is Paul is calling out Demas here. He calls out Alexander and Hymenaeus. There's many other places where this occurs in the text of Scripture. So the 11th commandment doesn't exist. There is no you shall be nice. And I know Love Vody Bauckham adds, and we ignore the other 10. Because we're more concerned about people liking us. We're more concerned about people saying good things, not being removed from you know, that speaking circuit or this thing or that thing. We're more concerned about not getting the book deal or having our book deal re renewed or people not paying attention to our blog or whatever than the fidelity, the faithfulness to the Lord and his word and his church and everything else. You might be thinking, well, yeah, but this only happens in the New Testament. That never happened in the Old Testament, right? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. To Samuel 12, the Lord sent Nathan to David. And he came to him and said to him, there were two men in a certain city. One was rich and the other poor. Nathan tells the story, right, of the shepherd and the sheep and the man and everything else. No shepherd, just the sheep and the man. Verse 5, then David's anger after hearing this story was greatly kindled against this man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he has done this thing and because he has had no pity. Verse 7, And David said, Excuse me, Nathan said to David, You are the man. You are the man. Thus says the Lord of God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul, and I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your arms, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if this were too little, I would add to you as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord and done evil in his sight? So David calling out the king to his face. David. Nathan. Excuse me. Nathan calling out the king to his face. And then what does he do? He says, he's broken, right? But what, what would have happened if Nathan wasn't there? I don't know, right? Maybe Disney will do like a what if series, right? Like the, the expanded universe. <laughs> the what if, what if David wasn't called out? What if David never killed Uriah and had a baby with Bathsheba? What if, what if, right? What if there's a British Captain America, but it's really a girl? I don't understand that one. My point is, there is no 11th commandment. Thou shalt be nice. None of that exists. None of that exists. Now, we don't always have to do it. Certainly not. That shouldn't be your only thing. Uh, I know there's some channels on YouTube that's their only thing. Okay, I guess. Uh, I've got other things to do than call out every single low-hanging fruit like Stephen Furtick and Joel Osteen. Yeah, these guys are heretics. T.D. Jakes. Now, if it's affecting you directly or indirectly and you see this and you feel the spirit leading you to this, fine. Uh, I was basically feeling that this needed to be done uh, because I've gotten some pushback from some people recently. Uh, not much. And that's okay, even if I had. There's reasons why, and I feel convictionally about it. We have the freedom in Christ to do X, Y, or Z so long as it's not sinful. And calling someone out isn't sinful, especially if they're in the church and they're bringing reproach upon, upon Christ. Especially if it's false teaching, right? Or if it's something that this person is just out and out sinning, and it's obvious. Because here's the thing, if you don't say something, then that says you're fine with it. 
let that sink in. If you're a little like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I just, ah, fine, fine. I mean, you don't have to. I get not everybody's called to say something per se. But you don't criticize those who do. Okay, especially when it's so obvious. But the other thing is you're looking forward to help that person and those around them. Because, well, Paul calls out many people in Corinthians. That's a very, very good letter. Again, you think your church is messed up. Just read the Corinthian letter and realize it's not, <laughs> most likely. And yet this man has his mother's, uh, his father's wife, so his stepmom, right? And even unbelievers don't do this sort of thing. Even the pagans aren't doing this. Paul calls this guy out. And they know who he is, right? You know, it's Bob the coppersmith or whatever. It's not It's not unknown. Now, it's unknown to us. It's like, well, he didn't use a name there. Sure, he didn't use a name, but he still called him out. And he still mentioned that. Because they know who it is. It's a touchy subject. I get it. I'm a people pleaser, by the way, at heart. I don't like making people annoyed. And that's not my goal here. My goal is not to uh, sizzle and make people annoyed and scandal and everything else. That's not the point. The point is to... Be faithful in the context in which I find myself. And when people like, well, I don't know, the big wigs of Big Eva aren't calling out their friends, right? Like uh, Al Mole or not calling out David Platt for preaching a horrible sermon uh, here or there or the other or talking about his deficiencies as a white pastor and I need to learn or, you know, somebody else not calling out Matt Chandler because of his nonsense and talking about all this divisiveness and showing partiality and all this other stuff. Or people not calling out Tim Keller because, well, he's Tim Keller, though. He's kind of like, you know, he's kind of like the bishop of New York City. Like, we can't really touch him. It's like the guy's denying Genesis. The guy's denying this. The guy's denying that. He's embracing all sorts of uh, liberation theology and just heresy. And he's been doing it for years. And people are like, well, you know. But he's Tim Keller, though. He's Timothy Keller. You can pray for Tim Keller, by the way. He's got he's got uh, cancer. I think it's rather aggressive cancer. Um, and no, I'm not saying he's got cancer because he was has been teaching a lot of false junk for a long time. Not what I'm saying. Um, he's got cancer because of sin in a fallen world, because of Genesis three. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. My goal, contramundum against the world, but for the world. That's what the goal is. That's the whole point, to help you be discerning, more discerning, to sharpen being that iron, as Proverbs tells us. Iron sharpening iron, so is one man, so is one person sharpens another. That's the goal. Just drop a comment. Um, tell me if you like this uh, or you didn't like it. You can dislike by typing dislike. I encourage people to do that. <laughs> that way people can see, like, hey, you dislike because YouTube removed that. We'll talk about that in another episode. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. But... Share this, please. Um, this isn't all I do. Again, I do other things as well. Bible study is talking about this. I was doing a book review uh, of Vody Bauckham's book, Fault Lines. Uh, that's going to be wrapping up here shortly. And then I've got some new things coming in the new year. So until next time, be against the world for the sake of the world. Be confident on the world, okay? See you next time.